live from where steaks rule and veggies drool. It's the Mastication Station. With your host, because he still hasn't found himself, Tony J. Lennon. And tripod impersonator, the studio ed, Lee Daly. Our guest tonight, disc jockey and Dancing with the Stars runner-up, Chad Burris. And the ever-lovely and talented songwriter, Mark Turney. Our musical guests, all the way from Tickfaw, Mississippi, Mama Nem. Our sponsor tonight is the Hot Rod Medical Equipment Company. Souped up medical equipment with a touch of danger. And now, if I'm fake, I ain't notice, cause my money ain't. Tony J. Lemon. issue upstairs so I had to uh, I had to be part of the maintenance crew hi everybody welcome to Massachusetts Station I just got out of the uh, Teen Wolf's Dad's Lookalike contest how'd you do oh pretty good I thought you should be a Looks front runner like, you should I think I should be a front runner front runner yeah so hey Lee Daly's here hey everybody the studio editor, yeah it makes me come with funny so uh, it's a two-man show yeah with the two-man crew with the uh, Four man plungers. crew, plungers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't know, I, I don't know why you still have that. Um, that wasn't, okay. Okay. <laughs> as long as you return it to maintenance. Yes, I will, I will. Unused, the unused uh, portion uh, I will Clean it too. Yeah. Where are we at? We are in uh, Belmont, North Carolina. Belmont, North Carolina. Yep, we came down here. We were supposed to come to Belmont for the Belmont Steaks, big horse race. That's a big meal, right? It's a Steaks. big meal. The for the horses that lose, oh. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know how true that is, but uh, I think we're in the wrong location because nobody in town, and correct me if I'm right, a wrong audience, really? nobody knows anything about no horse race Oh, here. Oh. So Maybe the race is over? The race could be over. Oh, you know what, I've um, seen your hernia. So if, if is there a glue factory here by chance? <laughs> There's a mustard factory. Hmm. I don't know how, that, two how those there. two correlate with each other. Well, horses. So... Uh, I'm going to have to get with travel. Yes. Because they are putting us, I think, in the wrong locations. This, I think so, too. This is not, I don't, there's no big horse race here. And uh, by the way, it looks like we have quite a bit of people here tonight. We do have an so audience our capacity? of 1,200, which is interesting because the population of Belmont, North Carolina 1150. is 1150. <laughs> Divided a couple so times. hopefully, we'll keep all 1,200 of you through the entire show. We have a wonderful show today. Yeah. Yeah, and I like your uh, get up up here in front of your podium. Yeah, this is That's the our sponsor, right? latest and greatest from Hot Rod's medical devices. Hot Rod. They're one direction only, Healy Wheely Neely. <laughs> and as long as you're going in one direction, this is the model you want to purchase. Yes, I love that. Uh, if you don't make any right or left turns, it's, it's great in Walmart, aisles six, seven, and eight. <laughs> I'm growing this thing out under my chin. That's very ZZ top -ish. Yeah, I'm going to see. How far I can get it. Uh, oh boy. Trying to get another zip code or two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our <laughs> guest tonight, Chad Burris. He is a DJ at WELT at the library in Fort Wayne, back in Fort Wayne. Way back north. And he also is a civic theater actor. Actor. Thespian, if you will. Thespian. 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 As well as comi comedic. Comedic? Is that how you say it? Comedic. comedic. Com comedy, comedy, comedic, comedic actor and uh, songwriter. guitar player, songwriter, and extraordinaire of other things, Mark Turney, mm -hmm. the uh, ever lovely Mark Turney, will be here this evening to give you a song or two. I mean, probably have one song. We'll see what happens. So, those are our guests tonight, and there are no surprises. So, nope. some of you might leave because there's no surprises. Uh, we'll be back after this, and if we if we come back, you'll know. It. So, There you go. When did 
did you start baking from scratch? It's not scratch, Mom. It's new Pillsbury Plus. A yellow cake this firm could only be from scratch. It's Pillsbury Plus. A cake this moist could only be from scratch. A cake this rich could only be from scratch. It's Pillsbury Plus. The plus is pudding. Mm. Pudding right in the mix to add that moistness. Mmm, rich flavor. New Pillsbury Plus, huh? Looks like scratch has met its match. <laughs> Yeah, One yes, exactly. Yeah. Simple comment. We lose half our audience. <laughs> hey, are we on? We've been on. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Mastication Station. And we just all went on a field trip just for, for a second there, so we're all kind of like huffing and puffing from that. Uh, our sponsor tonight, Lee, who is it? Well, our sponsor tonight is the Hot Rods Medical Devices. And you can see they have uh, generously loaned us this fabulous Healy Neely Wheelie yes. thing for people that can't get around uh, on their own. Uh -huh. And they have a, a vast variety of other medical devices. Ah. Now, your, yours here is called the Das Boot. Right? This is, yes. I'm uh, sporting one of their devices down here. You probably can't see that. If you pan down the camera, you'll yeah. see I am a big boot. sporting a, a rather large ankle brace boot. It's their latest uh, That's Sterling. That's the pump kind where the red thing is. Right, it's the uh, Michael, Michael Jordan, Jordan. Yeah. Uh, pump boot. Yeah. So just in case I wanted to bounce off of the stage, <laughs> I could do that. So that's our sponsor, Hot Rods Hot Medical Rod Devices. Medical Devices. Are they a German company? <laughs> I think they are, actually. They, well, they're a conglomerate. So it's, it's many different countries are mm -hmm. uh, multi-generational. Multi-faceted. Yeah. So. Like a diamond. Uh, welcome back again to Mastication Station. We have Chad Burris here this evening. Hi, Chad. Can you hear the clapping? <laughs> Wait for the clapping Thanks to die down. Me. Yeah. And so Chad is involved in the Civic Theater as well as many other things. I just want to chit chat about I that. I like person. to keep busy. Yeah. So you were in a play at the Civic Theater, and what was that? I was in uh, several, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I started in Young Frankenstein a couple years ago. Ooh. Now, were you the Frankenstein? No. I That's was, good. I was in the ensemble. I was one of the people with the, the axes and the torches. One of the oh, peasants. good. Yeah. This was a real stretch, wasn't it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the monster. Yes, you know. yes. Um, and then I uh, had a lot of fun with that one. And I was later that year, I was in uh, uh, Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. And I had a bit part in that. Okay. Um, what did you do in the kind of Christmas Carol? I was Mr. Smythe, the guy who begs for extra time to pay his mortgage. Oh, okay. And Scrooge is like, no, tomorrow morning. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and then I was in uh, um, White Christmas. Mm -hmm. I was the snoring man on the train. Mm -hmm. Oh. And then, uh, is it hard to memorize that line? <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Slept through practice. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm snoring through this whole scene, and then, uh, and then I get to jump up and start singing. You know? Oh. So that was fun. Uh -huh. And then... Uh, the light, latest one was uh, Le Cage à Faux, which is uh -huh. like the French version of the birdcage. Uh -huh. With oh. the, the Robin Williams movie. Right. Yeah. Right. So how long of a, a time commitment is that when you're in practices and performances um, and all that? Usually it's six weeks of uh, rehearsals mm -hmm. and then like two to three weeks of performances. Wow. So that's, that's mostly in the evenings, I'm assuming, and weekends right. and all right. that stuff? Yeah, mostly like seven to ten. Uh-huh during the week. What's it like? I mean, because I, I think a lot of people, you know, if they have stage fright, they probably have fear of stage or being in front of people more than death. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I used to be one of those people. <laughs> so how did you get past, how did you get past that fear of all that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I still had stage fright the first couple times I did it, but, uh, but you have six weeks of rehearsals mm -hmm. and you're, you're, you, you basically, you go over it with a fine tooth comb. Hey, By the time you're out hey, on stage, it's just like you just kind of go into a zone, and you just you just you already have your stuff memorized, and because you've done it so many times, right? Especially the snoring part, right? So I imagine that if you knew it, knew it, knew it, you wouldn't even think about that. You'd actually almost enjoy yourself, right? You just kind of you just kind of pretend like there's no way there, and you just kind of you you already know what to do, and you go out there on stage and you just do it. And What's that? Um, what's that feeling you get when the curtain opens and then you see the whole, all those people sitting in the seats? Can you describe that? Uh, how it feels. There's, yeah, there's a little bit of nervousness in there. There's like butterflies uh -huh. or whatever. Yeah. Terror. <laughs> Terror. <laughs> so, 
besides that, you also do WELT, the radio station, and right. you have your own radio show. Right, that's the other thing I, I volunteer. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would just like, if I had a radio show, I would do this or that. So how do you, how do, you do your radio show? You, how do you produce it? Well, yeah, um, I, I've, my background is in broadcasting, mm -hmm. so I've been in radio. Okay. Um, and I do my show a little bit differently than most people do. I, I, can't, I produce it on my computer at home, mm -hmm. but I still use the studio um, to record my voiceover and everything because mm -hmm. I don't have the recording equipment at home. Right. Um, so, but, but people can come in to WELT and just hit record and do an hour show mm -hmm. and you know, record the whole thing for them. Can you play records there too? Mm -hmm. So and they can do like vinyl and on the radio? Yeah, turntables cool. and CD players and even USB ports for you know, flash drives and stuff uh -huh. like that. So what is the genre? It's a big word. It's French, though, and you know French. It's a big word for you, Tony. <laughs> well, for me. Jean Ray. What? Jean Ray. Oh, that was Gain Ray. Gain Ray. Gain Ray. You think Gain Ray. What is the genre of your show? What kind of songs do you play? Music you play? My show is uh, called 80s Spotlight. Ah, the 80s. Yeah. So it's all 80s music. <laughs> uh, mostly popular stuff, but there's some obscure stuff that I throw in there as well. Yeah, and I've listened to your show, and I really appreciate the obscure stuff. Because yeah. it seems like the radio is always going to play... The, the same like three or four songs every hour. Right, and that's the whole idea. I mean, th to hear stuff that you might not hear everyone. Yeah. All the time, and uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's stations here in town that do 80s weekends, but mm -hmm. they play the same old stuff. Same old stuff, and you're doing like some obscure stuff, B-side stuff, sure, or whatever. Yeah. Do you have a, a song or two that you play so that you can have time to go to the bathroom? Uh, it's long enough for that. There are some songs long enough. For I don't that. know. Was there long songs in the eighties? Yeah. I thought yeah. What, was that, what was the song that uh, <coughs> the, the Michael Myers in his uh, TV uh, movie? He's in the car. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, that was seventies. That was seventies. Well, if you make it long enough, it becomes an eighties. <laughs> <laughs> it played until the eighties. <laughs> it rolled around. <laughs> So, yeah, what, do you have a song that you play? What, what, what would it be if it was long enough to... A long song from the 80s? I was, mm -hmm. See, I didn't ask you that ahead of time, so I'm, try, I'm trying to trip you up um, a bit. Let's see, I, I Need a Lover by uh, John Mellencamp is pretty long. Is that a long, is that like a the club dance mix or something? Is long no, the, the intro itself is like two minutes. Oh, really? So, um, <laughs> what is the hardest part about ma making a radio show? Um, there's actually quite a bit of research. I mean, it, at least it, for my type of show since it's 80s uh -huh. and I have a different theme every week so I, I, I have to come up with a playlist that fits that theme and make sure I got the songs in the right order and mix it all together. And like all these songs have the word dishes in them or something like that? I've done, I've done stuff with titles. What, was, like like what one, was one of them? Like one word titles. Okay. You know, so I did uh, Drive and Kiss and um, Jump and... <laughs> this is call-ins just to check to make sure if he's really there. Call ins on a show that's recorded ahead of time? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. well, I can yeah, make I it happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be great. <laughs> so, are you ready for a little challenge? Sure. Okay. Oh boy. So, we're going to do <laughs> fact or crap. Uh -huh. This was so popular, we had uh, the most emails were on this game. So, <laughs> um, on Mastication Station, you know that we have a little challenge. So, Lee is going to read a fact or crap, and we have to decide if it's true or not. Correct. Okay. So he's going to say something. Do we want a practice round or we just want to go for it? I think we just go for it. Go for it. Go We're going to go best of one or maybe three. No, best out of three. Best out of That's three. not fair. Right. So I'll use my Back ocular high. enhancers. Okay. <laughs> okay, here you go. Okay, here's your first uh, question. The inventor of Vaseline ate a spoonful of the stuff every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Back or crap? I'm going to say crap. I'm going to say fact. That's a fact. One nothing. One nothing. Have to be the wife. This one. Kiss that wife. Kiss that wife. Okay. Question number two. John Wayne and Gregory Peck are both sons of policemen. I'm gonna go crap. I'm saying crap on that one too. That is crap. They are both sons of pharmacists. Okay. Okay. One to nothing still. Okay. It's a tough. How can it be one to nothing? Because he but won one, I didn't, and we had a tie on that yeah, one. Yeah, we, can we cancel each other out on that yeah. one. Yeah, okay. come on, man. Quiet. <laughs> Next, Boolean logic is a term first raised in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books. Boolean, Boolean, mm, Boolean logic. crap every time. Hmm? I'll say crap. That's crap. Yes. It was developed in the late 1800s. Right. Okay, so 
All right, be that way. <laughs> Originally, we got here. all right, this is good for you. The rent is almost done. Originally, throwing salt over the left shoulder was thought to throw it into the eyes of the devil. Oh, I'm going to go fact on that one. Oh, you silly. I'll say crap. That's a fact. Yeah. One, one. one to one. One to one. We need to one more. Yeah. One more. Titanium is the hardest naturally occurring substance in the world. Crap. I'll say fact. Crap. Diamonds Woo! are. Can you believe Diamonds are forever. I think it's rigged. It is rigged. <laughs> well, everybody, uh, would you please welcome and thank Chad Burris for being here, and please Thanks, check Chad. out his radio sto radio yeah, station show. Yes, yeah, 80 Spotlight. It's on WELT 95.7 FM, and it's Thursdays at eight. Thursdays at eight. All right, we'll be right back after this, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Daylight savings time is going on right now at your Toyota dealer. He has the best stock of new Toyota Corollas he's had in months, and he's dealing on two doors, four doors, liftback, and sport coupes. He's even dealing on Corolla Tercel, Toyota's front-wheel drive gas station. Yeah. So grab your hat and hurry on down to your Toyota dealer now. Here comes Campbell. So, uh, we're going to take advantage while uh, Tony is off. He's in the back signing some papers for legal uh, again. And uh, we have a very special guest flown in from California, the uh, comedic song stylings of Mr. Mark Turney. Go ahead, Mark. Take the, take the stage. Well, this is how we do with the Mighty McGuigans. I'm a, a lead singer of the Mighty McGuigans. And this is a song about standing up to a bully. It's an Irish song, so this is the thing I have to kind of... Adjust my accent here. Mm -hmm. so, the thing about Irish music is that, that sometimes we do we don't always say whiskey. We sing a lot about whiskey, okay? But we don't always say whiskey because, frankly, not a lot rhymes with the word whiskey. Uh, so we <laughs> might say a drop of the pure, a drop of the crather, the juice of the barley, these types of things. Also, never say cheers, okay? That's a that's an English thing to do. And, yeah, not a good idea to do around Irish. So we say slancha. 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 This is called The Day I Beat McCluskey. <laughs> it's a tough rough the beer for courage, and it's slancha when I know. I hit the bully on the nose and made the bully fall. The day I beat McCluskey, I could hold me head up high. The day that I remember well. Until the day I die. No, I'm not the biggest, no, I'm not the biggest person, and the bravest that you meet. But the bully called McCluskey is a terror in the street. I tried to mind me business and be kind to every soul. But drunk or sober, that McCluskey's nothing but my throat. It's a drunk to do for courage, and it's not your morning all. I took the bully off the nose and made the bully fall. The day I beat McCluskey, I can hold me head up high. The day that I remember. I die. Now I poison a little whiskey every Friday after work. And walking home, I often find the cluskey with a smirk. Who grabs me by the ear or slams a fist to kick me out. That takes the bottle of whiskey and an up a cluskey go. It's a bottle of beer for birds, but it's not you want it all. I hit the booty on the nose and make the booty fall. The day I beat the cluskey, I can hold me head up high. The day that I remember why. Until the day I die. Now McCluskey was a stealthy one, so I lived in fear. I never knew if I were safer than that he was near. Those freckled fists were somewhere I can fall and face to be. McCluskey was the mean and cloudy road to Aberdeen. It's the dust of fear from Christ, and it's so I want it all. I hit the bully on the night to make the bully fall. The day I beat McCluskey, I can hold me and I'm I'm a 
Hey, everybody, I just got back because I was in legal. I had to sign a lot of documents, and, and I'm sorry that I had to, like, be gone for a little bit. Lee was kind of like, you know, Standing he was subbing in. for me. So, mm -hmm. Lee, how did it go the last couple of It was of great. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mark Turney. Hi. He's a comedic uh, songwriter. We flew him in from Witness Let's Protection, <laughs> and uh, probably going to have to shadow his face at some point <laughs> in final editing. I do want to say, I, they say the camera adds 10 pounds. You can tell I've been on a camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're Mark. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, so I heard that you were playing guitar or something. No, and I don't play guitar. You don't. What was that? That was an ukulele. An ukulele. Okay, a baritone ukulele. So a baritone ukulele. It fools people. Okay. It's kind of the Rodney Dangerfield of the musical. <laughs> <laughs> no respect. Yeah. I was. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, playing it one time, and I'm looking over here, and there's a guitar player, and I'm looking over here, and there's a double bass. And all of a sudden, I looked down, and I just felt like I just got out of the pool, and the water was really cold. You know. Shrinkage. Yes. So I kind of, okay, okay. No respect. Thanks for the visual. Yeah, I thought, I thought you'd like that. Yeah. So are you a member of uh, groups that play? Yeah. Do you play locally? What, what kind of groups are you in? I, I hear there's more than no, one. No, I'm in an Irish band called the Mighty McGuigan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, kind of in the Flog and Molly Pogues vein. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of originals, but we do some covers too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm also, we're uh, reforming a group we had uh, uh, several years back called Rhapsody and Wax, which okay. is a 20s and 30s prohibition era jazz hot jazz group mm -hmm. uh, we do it in full costume mm -hmm. you know, I can't give you anything <laughs> but love baby you know that type of thing so are you going to be playing out uh, like this summer like around town or yeah uh, we yeah we're actually uh, going to be playing in uh, Lafayette uh, in July uh -huh. uh, we just got done playing Fort Wayne mm -hmm. um, yeah so and then we're going to try and work into Michigan and Ohio we we played uh, in Columbus there was a convention we played out there and mm -hmm. we were the only Non oldies. <laughs> Did you get a lot of Irish. attention? And they're going, "What's this Irish band?" Did you get a lot of attention because you were so different? Oh uh, yeah, we did. We got huge, huge. Res I'm sorry if I sound like Trump. <laughs> huge. Huge I'll tell you what, it was yeah. really, really huge. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then, I think because they were, they're kind of going, you know, the oldies are getting old. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no offense to anyone that likes oldies. How <laughs> rude. Uh, but yeah. see. Uh, with my musical background, when I think old music, I think like 12th century troubadour music. Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of just doing something, you are now making board games. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we're not actually making it. We have uh, two games in test play. One is under construction, and uh, probably five or six are in uh, R and D. Uh, mad dice games. Be looking for mad dice mm -hmm. games. Uh, all, all over the. Uh, try and do something fun. Uh, board games are getting much more. Uh, popular mm -hmm. because all the online stuff and all that yeah. you're in your own little bubble mm -hmm. and this way you can look people in right. the eye and you're having fun <laughs> doing a silly game oh uh, you mentioned celebrate recovery yeah. yes like set it so I, I bet there's a lot of people watching don't know what that is okay it's a it's a, a faith-based uh, Christ-centered recovery program uh, that is worldwide mm -hmm. okay. and uh, anyone with any kind of hurt habit or hang-up Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not all, you know, 
uh, alcoholics and drug addicts and stuff like that. It's you might have anxiety from when you mm -hmm. were a kid. Mm -hmm. You might your spouse has been cheating on you. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have a gambling problem. You might be really prideful. Mm -hmm. And gee, I need to get my pride under control. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of takes the teachings of Jesus, specifically the Beatitudes, mm -hmm. and breaks them down. And instead of turning them into a nursery rhyme, which is how most people read them, mm -hmm. blessed are the poor in spirit. Na, 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 na. Break up. What is he saying here? And then you realize, oh, that first one is the first step in the 12-step recovery okay. program. I can't do it on my own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, poor in spirit. You're spiritually bankrupt. Wow. And then you realize it's liberating when you realize, I can't do it on my own. Yeah. So it's basically taking uh, those words and making them very practical yeah. to any, anything that you could be oh. dealing with. Or exactly. Having. Yeah. Yeah. So in fact, in Sacramento, yeah. it is the official recovery program because the recidivism rate for inmates is zero. Really? That have gone through some of the do you think you could uh, do with a challenge? Do a challenge. You challenge us? Be challenged. Come Are on. You can bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Next. Princess Elizabeth was watching wildlife in Kenya when she became Queen Elizabeth. You're crazy. Fact or crap? Fact. I'm just going to, for the sake of being contrary, go crazy. <laughs> Fact. Hey. Hey. I got one. You did. I didn't try that hard, so. No. All of it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. The Asian elephant has more wrinkles than the African elephant. I'm going to go crap because the African elephant is considerably bigger and therefore more wrinkles. I'm going to say Fact. Your explanation is silly. <laughs> They're both equally wrinkly. Oh, wait a minute. Who won? That so was I, a trick you got it, you question. You got it right. He got it right. It was trap. You got it right. You got it right. One to one. One to one. Okay, tiebreaker. 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 Another music well, that's question. That's right. You're right. It's true. Bob Marley's father was a Jamaican bush doctor. <laughs> Doctored bush bushes. Doctor. Bush. He Are worked we on talking bushes? that he was a doctor in the bush? Or that he Worked on was bushes. a. Was I'm afraid a, the committee cannot elaborate. Uh, a, a, he had a lawnmower and a. Was, did he work for Bush Chiropractic? <laughs> uh, Bob Marley's father was a Jamaican Bush doctor. I'm going to go ahead and say. Crap. Fact. His father was a British landowner. Crap. Did I get anything? Yeah. So would you please you thank Mark Turney for being here, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Be sure to have your uh, parking validated tomorrow. Uh, actually parked outside the room. Hey, welcome back to Mastication Station, and it's been a great show. Some I watched, some I kind of was gone for a while. Um, if you want to email us, if you want to give us any quips, humorous vignettes, anything of that nature, and go as Tony Stark. <laughs> there it is. Mastication Station at Yahoo.com. Mastication Station mm -hmm. at Yahoo.com if you want to uh, contact us. If you All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I've seen your hand.